The third generation full hybrid only Honda HRV brings its own formula to the small SUV crossover segment. It's more expensive than most competitors and less roomy than some, but for customers prioritising cabin sophistication, interior flexibility and powertrain efficiency, it might well be worth the extra outlay. It's fairly clear from the get-go here that this is a car for pragmatism rather than for performance, although that uh, doesn't mean that it can't be enjoyable in its own way. Uh, quite a few of the ingredients here actually work very well, the highlight being ride quality, and that's aided by sophisticated suspension that's bolted to a more rigid platform. In fact, the way that this car cossets you over poorer surfaces might easily sell you on it, the ride being soft but well damped, the whole setup being supple enough to easily absorb bumps while controlling body roll well through corners. The vague steering won't encourage you to push very hard through those turns, but if you do so, you'll find plenty of traction and some of the feel of a larger, more expensive SUV. But what you're really going to need to get used to if you're going to choose this car is the way its rather unique petrol engine works. It's a self-charging hybrid of the full fat sort. Honda calls it an EHEV and it comes in one variety only with CVT auto gearbox and front wheel drive. It's the same 1.5 litre four cylinder twin electric motor power plant that we've already seen in Honda's Jazz Super Mini. But here to cover off the HRV's extra weight, there's a bigger battery, one kilowatt hour as opposed to 0.86 kilowatt hours. And power is boosted by 21 PS to 131 PS. You can't plug it in, but battery power is certainly in play far more of the time than is usual in a self-charging hybrid. Uh, the engine only actually drives the wheels when full power is needed, and even then, it usually gets some electrical assistance. Uh, otherwise, its role is to drive a generator, which keeps the battery topped up so that the electric motors can supply forward motion to the front axle. That ought to maximize efficiency, and it does, although lighter full hybrid sector rivals can better the official figures quoted here, 67.3 mpg on the combined cycle and 122 grams per kilometer of CO2. In theory, more time spent in EV motion ought to mean a quieter drive, and sure enough, when it's being driven very gently, the HRV is indeed quiet and smooth and pleasantly responsive, with just a gentle hum from the electric motors. Flex your right foot even a modest amount though, and the piece is very definitely broken with a cattle-like moo, which frequently cuts in and out, and which you would tar off very quickly if you were to continue to drive in that manner. As a result, uh, if the slow-moving urban jungle isn't your natural habitat, then we'd suggest a very long test drive in this car before you sign on the dotted line. But if it is, this Honda's an admirable tool for school-run suburbia, and very much a sign of the times in this segment. Here's a car that's very much of the moment, a crossover SUV which combines this genre's higher stance with a raked rear window and design details likely to appeal to many customers in the market for a smallish SUV offering a reasonable combination of practicality and panache. Although it shares its underpinnings and much of its engineering with Honda's Jazz Super Mini, the HRV is, to all intents and purposes, a clean sheet design. The smartest volume brand model in the segment? Well, we would subscribe to that view. You may not. These things, after all, are subjective, aren't they? If you're wondering why this Honda costs a bit more than obvious rivals, get out your tape measure. It's 110 millimeters longer than a Renault Capture E-Tech 145, 135 mils longer than the Hyundai Kona Hybrid, and a full 160 mils longer than the Toyota Yaris Cross. So the exterior is smart, if not particularly distinctive. Does the interior follow a similar theme? Let's find out. Anyone switching from the previous generation HRV will feel they've jumped forward a decade. Now you might not mistake this for a premium brand model, but there is an impressive sense of calm and cohesion here, and it's aided by the almost unbroken horizontal trim strip which runs across the front of the cabin, the centre of which is topped by this high-mounted 9-inch touchscreen. 
Horizontal vents stretch across the fascia just above it, while lower down it's unusual to note that there's no centre stack in its place this unusual swirling strip chrome plated above base trim uh, encircles the gear lever with storage areas above and below. Above entry level trim are neat little vent controls offering a diffuse setting which promises to spread the air more evenly around the cabin. As usual on Honda, the driving position is exemplary and everything falls uh, instantly to hand. Looking through the steering wheel, there's an unusual combination of a physical speedometer dial on the right and a configurable information screen on the left. There are no configurable screen styles or GPS mapping options, just a whole list of ways you can display information in the left-hand virtual dial. Let's move now to the rear where, as I mentioned earlier, the doors are accessed by these hidden upper catches, loved by east seats but loathed by short children. Well, there's certainly plenty of legroom, helped by a lot of space between the floor and the bottom of the front seats. In fact, there's 35 millimetres more legroom than there was in the previous HRV, and the seats themselves are nicely contoured, although not super supportive. The outer two positions are, of course, very much the preferred place to be. Anyone seated in the middle will find themselves perched on a rather flat and raised cushion and reaching for belts integrated into the ceiling, although at least they'll have some leg space because of the flat floor and the positioning of the centre console here. These rear seats don't slide or recline, but they are of the Honda Magic variety, so feature the brand's party trick folding mechanism. That means the seat base can be flipped up towards the back of the car, cinema seat style, enabling taller objects like an electrical item or that tall plant you've just purchased from the garden centre to be carried behind the front seats. Finally, let's take a look in the boot. Now, if you remember the body length dimension as we mentioned earlier, you'll be expecting this to be class leading. So it comes as a bit of a surprise to find uh, that the tailgate, which is power operated above entry level trim, rises to reveal one of the smaller trunks in the sector, 319 litres in size. At least the opening is wide and deep and the lips pleasingly low, which should make uh, it easy to move heavier or bulkier items in and out. It's a shame Honda hasn't included either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 seat back split. As a result, if you have a couple of rear passengers, uh, longer items will have to go on the roof. Uh, given the price here, it's also annoying that Honda doesn't provide cargo sidewall catches. So to most easily drop the 60-40 split rear backrest, you'll have to go around to the side. Still, at least there you'll be able to better appreciate the other advantage of that magic seat folding mechanism we mentioned earlier. Uh, this neatly cantilevers the seat base when it folds, so you get a completely flat load area, although it's still not a very large one. The 987 litre figure is two to 300 litres down on some rivals. In short, the useful seat flexibility cost you a little in capacity, but Honda owners will tell you usually that the trade-off in usability is worth it. We suspect that the HRV will either seem perfectly suited to you or oddly compromised. If you're looking for an easy-going companion that delivers a high degree of comfort and efficiency above that of conventionally powered alternatives, then this could be the car for you. However, you'll just have to be as easy-going because demands for acceleration introduce a level of noise which is a stark contrast to the sophisticated calm cabin and the impressive ride quality. Still, there are compensations, primarily that clever magic seat system, which allows you to carry tall items which you would have to either lay flat or leave at home with rival SUVs. That makes up for the surprisingly small boot, some scratchy elements of cabin trim, and efficiency figures which, although they're frugal, aren't quite as good as we'd hoped and lag a bit behind rivals. For all that though, quite a few will see this Honda as a smarter choice, both in the driveway and in terms of its concept cleverness. The brand still isn't importing enough for it to become a mainstream choice, but then this was never going to be a high volume model. It would instead appeal to those who are in search of the cleverest and most versatile car of this kind. High fashion is all very well, but its charms do tend to fade.
we think the appeal of this Honda is less likely to.